attributes. Let's talk about them. In Houdini, attributes are incredibly important. We use them all the time for a variety of different things. And the way that we can look at them are as traits. Now, this exists in the real world too, right? Every sort of physical object around you can be described with a bunch of traits. So let's just say we have a bunch of apples and each apple may have a different color, right? That may be one of their attributes. So this apple over here might be red when that one over there is green. This one over here might weigh 107 grams while that one over there weighs 92 grams. So that's already two attributes, right? We have a color and we have a weight. That one's red, weighs 107 grams. That one's green, weighs 92 grams. And in the same way, that's how attributes work in Houdini. That's simply used to describe things. And I can show you this. If we go into Houdini and I go ahead and just create a single point, right? That's all I have. It's just this one point floating in space. What I end up with is the most fundamental attribute, position, right? If we have a point in space, there is nothing to describe it except its position. And Houdini stores positions as an attribute called P. Now, it's a capital P and case is important. There's plenty of attributes that Houdini creates and recognizes and uses. And so P is one of them. I'll give you a list of all of the others. You can take a look over here. And I'll also be linking the documentation for the kind of recognized attributes inside of Houdini. However, what we have is a point with a position and we can take a look at this position. Firstly, let's see the attribute name. If we middle mouse on that node, you'll see that there is one point attribute P. That is position. If we go over to our geometry spreadsheet, we can see that point zero has a P attribute that is defined by its position along the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. And every point that you ever place in Houdini will have positions. So we can go ahead and add another attribute. Let's add color, for example. And there's plenty of ways to add attributes in Houdini. For this one, we're just going to use a color node. Straightforward, right over there, we'll make our point red. If we middle mouse now, we have CD and P. CD is a color attribute, once again, recognized by Houdini. So now we have two attributes. In our geometry spreadsheet, we have point zero, which can be defined by its position in space, as well as by its color. And again, there are other ways to create attributes. You can use an attribute create to create an attribute. And let's go ahead and use this attribute create over here. You simply give it a name. So the name of the attribute that you want, and you can go ahead and give it a value, right? So if we have a name of weight, we should now have an attribute that's called weight. And if we middle mouse over here, you'll see CD, P, and weight. And at the bottom over here, I've given it a value of 107. That may be grams or whatever. And if we go to our geometry spreadsheet, we can see that we have position, color, and a weight with a value of 107. Now, weight isn't recognized by Houdini. So why would we need an attribute that we've created? Well, let's just say that we have, again, our example with all of our apples. Let's say we only want apples that weigh more than 100 grams. Well, if we have an attribute that tracks all of the different weights of the apples, it's really easy to simply remove all of the points that have a weight less than 100 grams. And there's other ways to add attributes. For example, you can use an attribute wrangle and you can create attributes in here. I'm not going to go into the VEX coding too much, but just S at, that means we're creating a string with the following name, S at nickname. And we can make that equal to Jerry, right? And now if we middle mouse over here, we have CD, nickname, P and weight. If we go over to our geometry spreadsheet, position, CD, nickname, weight. And this point is called Jerry. So if we have a thousand points and we're looking for Jerry in that crowd of points, very easy to find him, right? He's got a name, we can just find him. Now attributes aren't just used like this. Right? They're actually used by Houdini to do things like pushing simulations along. For example, if you have a flip simulation and a bunch of points in that simulation, each point will have a velocity and each frame, it'll use the previous frame's velocity to define where the point needs to be in this current frame. Or if we have a bunch of points and we want to scatter some rocks to them, we can have attributes that define how big each rock is, how it's oriented, all of those things, right? It's incredibly important to have attributes to define a bunch of traits. Now we've only looked at attributes existing on a single point, but attributes can exist in different ways, in different classes. So we have the single point over here and it has a color, but now what happens if we have two points and we connect them up to create a line primitive, then what color does the line primitive get? Well, if we go over here, you can see that we have two points and each point is a different color. So the line 
is a blend between the two colors. So that might be an issue because maybe you don't want it to run over points, you want it to run over primitives. And we can do that. We can change the class from point to primitive. Now the entire primitive has its own color and we can see this, right? So that's just a line primitive where two points are connected. But if you connect three points, you end up with a triangle. If you connect four points, you end up with a quad. So we have the rest of them over here. As you can see, if it's on point, we have the sort of blending of colors. If it's on primitive, each primitive has its own unique color. The other class that we can use is the vertex class. Now, a vertex just defines the point where a point connects to a primitive. So as you can see, we have a bunch of points and a vertex is created wherever a point connects to a primitive. So if we try setting this to vertex, you'll notice that we have a unique color for each vertex. So you can store your attributes in different ways. And this becomes useful really depending on what you're using them for. For example, if you only have points, well, you want point attributes. Primitive attributes just won't do anything. Now there is one other type of attribute class that's important, and that is the detail attribute. Now detail is an interesting one, and I have my own way of thinking about it, but basically it's an attribute that exists independent of any particular piece of geometry. So what might something like that be in the real world? Well, that might be something like the seasons, right? So trees may change color depending on the seasons, but the attribute of season doesn't exist on the trees. It's independent of the trees. You could remove all the trees and the season still exists, right? It might still be summer or winter, whatever it is. That's an attribute that exists independent of the trees. That's what a detail attribute is. Now that might also be useful for describing an entire set of geometry. For example, if we go back to the apples we were talking about earlier, if we have a bunch of apples and we want to find out their average weight, well, no particular apple has the trait of average weight, right? The average weight over all of the apples exists independent of any particular apple. Again, that's a detail. A detail attribute exists independent of any particular piece of geometry. So that brings us to the end. I hope that that helped you to understand attributes and how they're used in Houdini. So the best way to think about it is just attributes are kind of traits that describe particular things inside of Houdini. So thank you for watching. I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.